Hey guys, my name's Sam. Welcome back to Prep Medic. In this week's video, I'm going to give you a tour of our brand new ambulance. All right guys, so this is one of our brand new ambulance. We just got three of them, but we only have one in service just so we can work out some of the kinks that come along with getting a new vehicle and having a new system to work out of. So notice this is more of a European style. The truck itself is made by Freightliner, which is also owned by the same company that owns Mercedes. So that's why there's kind of a similarity there. And then the box was actually mounted by Crestline. So for this video, I'm going to start in the patient compartment and uh, walk you through everything we carry back there. We're gonna walk around all of the exterior doors and what we carry on the outside of the ambulance and then I'll show you up in the cab and kind of go through everything piece by piece. So coming over to this door. All right, so coming in the side door, you'll notice right away we carry our stair chair on the inside of the door. Uh, for those of you that don't know, a stair chair is a device that you can seat a patient in and then it actually has treads that can climb down the stairs. It keeps us from having to lift a patient and ultimately saves our back. Looking into the ambulance, you can see three shelves, and these are made to be easily accessed from the outside of the ambulance. So I'm standing outside right now and I can easily grab one of these bags. On the top shelf, we have our vacuum splints, which are a special kind of splint that has the air evacuated from it. And then there's foam beads that will conform to an injured extremity. They're pretty comfortable for patients, all things considered. Next to that, we have our portable suction device. So if we're going in on a cardiac arrest or uh, another issue where we have to manage an airway, this is something that we can easily grab. And then we have our protocol books and our uh, refusal forms and some other paperwork in here in case we need them, in case our electronic reporting fails. Below that, we have our Lucas 3 device, which this is a compression machine for CPR. This was actually the first video I ever did on this channel. So if you're curious about this machine and what it does, go check out that video. And then the last thing uh, on this uh, shelf is our dead man's bag. So this is our blue bag. And essentially with this ambulance, you'll notice later that there's not a whole lot of cabinets. We don't carry a lot of supplies in the ambulance itself. So we're trying to function almost exclusively out of this bag for our ALS interventions. And that's because one, it keeps us from having to stock two of everything. So it saves us a little bit of money. And then it also gives all of our paramedics just one thing to know, one thing to memorize. And it's a lot easier for us to operate. So I'm not gonna go in detail because I do have another video with everything in this bag that really details stuff, but essentially in this bag, we have our IO, our airway roll, um, a intravenous kit, a set of BVMs, we have uh, cricothyrotomy equipment, king tubes for a backup airway, we carry tourniquets, chest seals, uh, needle decompressions, and then we also have some diagnostic equipment on that side and um, uh, another refusal form in case we need it. So I'm gonna step up here and we're gonna close this door so it uh, gets a little bit quieter. In conjunction with our dead man's bag, we carry this slinger, which this is our BLS bag, and this comes in with us on every single call no matter what. This has your basic diagnostic equipment, um, and then it also has uh, your sharps container, uh, pulse oximeter, a tourniquet, some minor wound care, and a splint. Right above those shelves I just showed you, we have our medication cabinet. Now, generally this is locked, but I've unlocked it for this video. And like the name implies, this carries all our advanced life support medications we carry on this ambulance. Once again, I've got a video detailing everything in this box. We have over 70 different medications we carry that we can give in the field. So I'm not gonna go into detail on this video because it would take forever. So if you're curious about that, go check out that video. Down below, we've got some bags of fluids. We've got lidocaine. Uh, we've got some different sized salines and D5W for certain kinds of infusions we mix, our dopamine and some 60 drop tubing. We also have the Duodote auto injectors for the potential uh, nerve gas exposure. We have a cyano kit for our firefighters if they get trapped in a fire for an extended period of time. And then we have our uh, nitroglycerin, our nitrile for uh, infusion nitro. Right next to the medication cabinet, we have another kind of airway cabinet. In the top, we have our CPAP, which is a positive pressure airway device that's really good for uh, CHF, congestive heart failure, COPD, um, and asthma, among some uh, other issues. 
Uh, this is a great device and we all really like it. Down here we've got our bag valve masks and those are for providing artificial ventilations to patients that are not breathing on their own. Now, coming over to the right of the captain's chair, uh, this is kind of the most unique feature of this truck. These are what replaces the cabinets here and these are pouches made by Ferno. These can be rearranged any way we want uh, on the wall. There's mounting brackets and then the individual pouches can be removed and put on different mounting brackets as well. So kind of a unique system. It saves some space in the truck and it also keeps us from having a cabinet that becomes too cluttered. So everything has its space. The thought of this truck is that we're operating out of the dead man's bag like I showed you before. So there's not a whole lot of supplies in the ambulance itself. Although we do carry some backups and then some of the uh, really high stakes devices as well. So in this top pocket, we carry our most common sizes of our endotracheal tubes. So it's mainly like 8.0s, 7.5s, that kind of thing. And then below that, we have everything to secure a tube and confirm placement. So we've got our uh, adult tube tamers, pediatric tube tamers, a end tidal sensor, and then we also have um, a rescue pod, which is not used very much, but the hospital requires we have it, so we still carry it. Next to that, we have our quick trach. So we've got an adult quick trach and a pediatric quick trach. Uh, this device has some mixed reviews in uh, pre-hospital setting. I, I've tried to use it once and it was not very effective. Um, unfortunately, in Iowa, we can't do surgical crike, so we have to settle for this for a emergency airway. Down below that, kind of tucked behind the captain's seat, we've got our uh, respiratory PPE, so some dust masks, some N95s. We also carry uh, goggles and then some biohazard bags for uh, the messy cleanup periodically. Coming down all the way uh, near the ground, we have our uh, suction for the truck. So that's connected to a tubing here, and then we've got our tonsil tip and our soft tip sections for suctioning both just a regular airway or somebody that might have a advanced airway in place. You'll see here next to all of that, we've got a series of controls for lights, um, turn on and off the oxygen, on and off the suction. We have our O2 uh, stack here, or at least one of them. And then we can also see a readout for the inline O2 to see how much is left in that over here as well. Continuing on this side of the ambulance, this bag, has everything we need for emergency trauma. Uh, so in here, we've got two chest seals, we've got a cat tourniquet, a SWAT T, and then two uh, needles for needle decompression. You'll notice that all the seats in this ambulance are forward facing. It's a new safety initiative um, in case we got in a crash. It's a little bit different taking care of a patient like that, but we've all kind of gotten used to it. And then there is a, a table that can be folded out to use as a workstation if need be right there. We do carry IV pumps. Uh, we mix a lot of uh, drips in the field and then we take transfers that have infusions going. So uh, this is actually really nice. It's a great tool for us. In this cabinet, we kind of have some odds and ends. So we've got our OB kits here, our soft restraints for a patient that's either combative or more often they have an advanced airway in place and we're trying to protect them from pulling that airway out. So we will use soft restraints uh, to keep them there. We've got a razor and then an extra Lucas battery in the back. Below that, we've got our uh, fluid warmer. So this has just normal saline on it that's being warmed. We've got 15 drop sets, and then we've got some normal saline that is not being warmed along with a pressure bag for our IOs. This is a thoroughly underwhelming cabinet. This has all our linens in it, so our blankets and our towels and then our pillows. Don't really need to explain that. And all the way down there, we've got a portable O2 tank and then a PD mate for pediatric patients. If we have to transport them, we can secure them to the cot similar to a car seat. It's a lot safer for them. Coming to the other side of the ambulance, this is our basic uh, trauma supplies. So in the top, we've got our SAM splint, our gauze, um, Coban, some abdominal pads, trauma shears, things for the not quite as emergent trauma that we'll deal with. This one has our diagnostic equipment in it. So we've got our blood pressure cuff, a stethoscope, our temporal thermometer, a uh, Doppler for uh, hearing the really low blood pressures or the faint blood pressures. They're also great for fetal heart tones and then there's some other uses for them. 
below that cabinet, we have our OTDs. Uh, these are traction splints for a mid-shaft femur fracture. They're essentially a tent pole that unfolds and then it'll provide uh, inline traction of the femur and realign things and really help with the pain of the patient and help prevent further uh, orthopedic injury. Below that, we've got a C-collar bag with a series of C-collars and some head blocks, and then you'll notice a scoop stretcher there. This cabinet can be accessed from the outside of the ambulance as well. Uh, we don't actually carry any long backboards anymore on these new ambulances. All right, so this section of the ambulance is kind of where the attendant is meant to sit. So the theory is, is they can sit for the entire call and have everything they need within reach um, to a certain extent. So right up on this wall, we've got hot and cold packs, pretty self-explanatory. We have spit hoods and emesis bags. We work in a college town. Uh, sometimes kids drink a little bit too much uh, and they don't know what they're doing. They've got a nasty taste in their mouth and uh, they'll spit on us or uh, try to spit on the floor and miss. So we'll sometimes put a spit hood on them if we have to, just to protect ourselves from that. Uh, but that's a pretty common occurrence. And then vomit bags, I don't need to explain those. Those are useful all the time for what we do. Uh, and it's really nice to have them in easy reach for us. So next to that, we have our basic O2 administration sets. So in this top pocket, we've got a non-rebreather mask, a regular nasal cannula, and then we have an end tidal CO2 nasal cannula. And uh, this is a great tool, we use it a lot. Below that, we have all our supplies for the nebulizer. Um, so we've got a basic nebulizer. We have a device to hook it to an endotracheal tube and uh, bag in albuterol and atrovent uh, that way. And then we've got a pediatric and an adult nebulizer mask in there as well. One lower, we have our electrodes for our EKG. So we have both uh, sets of four and six and together they'll make the 12 lead. And then below that we have all our kind of uh, random stuff for the monitor. So we've got our pediatric pulse oximeters, we've got extra uh, paper for the monitor. Uh, among some pediatric uh, electrodes as well. The monitor we are using is the Zoll X series. Now, uh, the Zoll X series isn't so much new to us anymore. We got about two years ago and we moved from Philips. I personally like uh, life packs, having used all three, but we've all gotten used to the X series and honestly, it works pretty well. For those of you that don't know, this monitor can do a four lead EKG, 12 lead EKG, which helps us um, look at arrhythmias in the field that we can correct. It also has a full set of vitals equipment so it can take a blood pressure, uh, it can take a pulse ox, and then we can actually download all those vitals into our report automatically after we're done. So it saves us a lot of time. On the other side, we've got defibrillator pads and those can be used for defibrillation and cardiac arrest. They can be used uh, for a synchronized cardio version in certain kinds of tachyarrhythmias and then they can be used to pace a patient that's uh, having bradycardia. So a uh, really useful machine and we really like it. One of the really cool things about this truck is that this mount can actually be uh, taken off this platform here if we need this workspace or if the monitor isn't in the right place. And we can actually put that up onto a wall. So either this wall over here, that wall over there and kind of rearrange things how we need it. It's not something we do a lot, but it's nice to have that option. You'll also notice on this side, we've got our end tidal CO2 uh, set, so our nasal cannula, and then the one for the ET tube, uh, just in case we need it. All right, so in this top drawer here, we use this as kind of a uh, desk area or workspace if we need a platform to do some work on. Um, we have a start kit in here for an IV, a loop, and a flush. It's just really easy to grab right here, and then we've got a notepad in case we have to take some quick notes. Coming down, we've got half of our IV supplies, so some of the uncommon sizes of catheters, uh, sy syringes for administration of medications, uh, blunt tips for drawing up medications, and then we have our MAD device, which is an internasal uh, medication delivery system, and then we have a three-way stopcock for your pediatric patients in microdosing. The third drawer has our most common IV supplies, so we've got our uh, loops and our flushes. We've got 20 gauge, 18, and then our start kit, some tape, and then your 22s and um, your alcohol swabs uh, down there. So you'll also notice in the tower, it's not super exciting, but we've got a trash can and a sharps container down there. And then we have another uh, Christmas tree for our O2 
right here for administration. Up above, we carry uh, three main sizes of gloves. So we've got our medium, large, extra large. There's only a couple staff members we have that carry the small gloves. So we kind of decided on these three and then they just stock gloves in their pocket uh, when they go on a call. One of the best features of this ambulance is the cot. This has a striker auto load system on it. So I'll sh cut to some B-roll and show you guys that. But essentially this will lift somebody up. I believe it's up to 700 pounds and we don't even need to lift them into the ambulance. Now, unfortunately, we still have to lift them onto the cot a lot of times, but it is a really great system. It's definitely a back saver, um, and it's just really cool how it works. On the cot, we have an O2 tank uh, for your oxygen administration out to the truck. And then underneath it, we carry a blanket, a mega mover, a soft cot, and a uh, series of masks and emesis bags and extra gloves in there. All right, so stepping out of the ambulance, we'll go through the exterior compartments. All right, so in the back, this is one of the shared compartments that also opens into the ambulance itself. We have a new scoop stretcher in here uh, that opens at both ends. Really nice, like to use it. Um, we use this mostly for carrying patients or extricating them from a car, but we're really not doing a lot of spinal immobilization anymore. We've got the C collars I showed you before, some head beds, and then we have a second scoop stretcher kind of broken down in there just in case we need it. On this side, it's another shared compartment. So we've got our uh, linens, our O2 tank, and then we also have a PAPRS unit and essentially hazmat suits in there for your infectious patients or potential minor hazmat incidents. We have a fire extinguisher and then some urinals and bedpans and crime tape just in case. And the last exterior compartment, um, this just has our inline O2 and our KED board, which is never used. We carry some kitty litter for uh, traction on icy environments. And then up there we have our mass casualty kits. And right here is just a bunch of circuitry that'll never touch ever. All right, now to the cab of the truck. All right, the cab of the truck is pretty standard to other ambulances. In the center console, we have our mutual aid radio, which is used to contact helicopters or services requesting an ALS intercept, or as we call it in Iowa, a tier. Here's our main radio. This can contact all three of our dispatch centers that can send us out. We've got a map light here siren module, microphone, and then our lights module for control of all the exterior lights of the ambulance. Have a trash can, some cup holders, which are a must, and then behind each seat, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we have our ballistic vests hanging on hooks. Now, I have been using my um, Safe Life Defense uh, vest to test it out for a review that I think I'll actually be releasing next week. Uh, so I've been using this, but we are issued um, vests that kind of stay in the ambulance. All right, in front we have a GPS unit just in case we get lost, which does happen periodically, but pretty rarely. And then in each side door, uh, we carry reflective vests. And don't let me forget, we do have gloves up here for uh, gloving up before we get to a call. It just saves some time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions about anything I covered today, please leave them in the comments down below. Overall, I really like this ambulance. It is very different from what we've had in the past, so there's been kind of a learning curve, but it looks really professional. It's very functional. You just have to adjust uh, how you operate as a paramedic slightly. I've got a lot of great videos coming up. I'm gonna be doing a review of my Safe Life Defense uh, vest for EMS and other applications next week, I believe. And then past that, I've got some uh, tutorials and then some other videos I'll be releasing. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you next week. Thank you.